Hello guys, this is Mike from MacProgramming.org. In this tutorial, I'm going to build on what we did last time, which was learn how an action listener works. And I'm going to keep this uh, inner class, this button listener class, because I'm going to write um, quite a few lines of code, and it would kind of make the constructor a little bit ugly to have a lot of logic within um, the little uh, inner class within here like I showed you in the first part well my goal in this one is to teach you about text fields and have if I have two buttons how to determine what action is performed and I want to create a class um, not a GUI class but just a regular class that will take in people and I want to type in people's name and people's names in the text fields and hit one button and it will add them to the list and the other button will print out the entire list so hopefully this won't take too long um, I don't really have it planned out I'm just gonna go off the top of my head with this one and how I would do it in real life so let me think um first let's add a person class that would be a good idea let's say person Okay. We're gonna make it really simple. I'm just gonna have a private uh, string first name and a private string last name. We're gonna create a constructor for this person, real basic, and it's just gonna take in string. Um, just to be sure, I'll say fn and string. LN. Uh, if we had a lot more time, I would just type it all out. Uh, I'll type it out. Oh well. First name, last name. Okay, so this dot first name equals first name, and this dot last name equals last name. Um, I don't really need getters or setters right now. I'll just do a two string public string two string. Um, I'm gonna return. Uh, let's do last name. We'll concatenate that with. We have to put in double quotes uh, to do this, but I'm gonna put a comma so if. You know, if it was John Smith, it would say Smith, comma, then a space, and then John. So I'm going to concatenate that with uh, first name. All right. Uh, there we go. And now I want to add, um, I'm going to create this button, and I'm going to call it the add button. Add button, and I'm going to create another button, and we're going to say print button. Okay, so down here, make sure that you change the names of all of these to match up. And what this one will do, we'll add the people to that class. So, new button listener, button listener, say add. Person. Okay, so we have a label. Where's the label? New J label. So the first label we're just going to say um, first. We're going to ask for the first name. And let's say, uh, we'll just call that uh, first label. And then we want to create a second label. Second label. And the second label will, oh, not second label, what am I talking about? I'll just say last label. So you, so it can jar your memory that that means last name. So I need to call this first label. And then let's just call, let's just create this down here, last label. They don't have to be in order, just when you add them to the panel and to the, the frame. Is when you want to have them in the correct order. So new J label. 
and we are going to put in a string here and just say last name little space okay so here's the add button um, now we want to create a print button and say equals new J button and this is going to say to say display all display people you don't want the button to be too big and print button you want to add the action listener add action listener and say new button listener all right as you can tell this has the same call to it to the button listener so down here when we hit a button um, it takes in the action event in the constructor and it will just print out or it will append to the text area I click the button but what we want to do now is determine the source of where the button was clicked so what we can do is say if e because that's what the variable name is right there or the um the inputted name say if e dot get source equals equals um, print button then we're going we're going to have a to do in there because I might have to do that in the next tutorial else if e dot get source um, equals equals add button we're going to instantiate a new person object but before we get into the source actually we can do it here we're going to say um, well let's create these text fields first so I can deal with uh, what we're going to do in there so now let's have a private J text field we'll say first field and last field alright and um, just add it somewhere in here let's say first field equals new j text field and we can give this an initial size if we want to say 10 that will give you plenty of room um, not 10 characters but uh, well I guess it is but it, it's a lot bigger than it sounds so just mess with it and see what size do you want to set it to? Last field equals new J text field. And I'll put 12 in here because last names are a little bit bigger sometimes. Alright, so we want to say um, string first name equals, uh, where was it? We're going to take what is in this first field right here and we're going to say first field dot get text okay and then we also want to get set a string last name and we want to set that to last field dot get text and the reason we want to do that is because this person takes in two strings as its arguments so we right now if we just passed in first field that's a text field that's not a string so you want to convert that to a string right there and now we're just going to pass in first name comma last name Oops. So 
Now let's add these panels, these things to the panel correctly. Um, panel dot add. Want to add first label, and we want to say panel dot add first field. Panel dot add last label and oops, panel dot add last field. Okay, so hopefully my box is big enough to contain this right now. And we want to add the add button and we also want to add the print button. Panel dot add um, print button. We added the panel. Now uh, let's see if this all fits and how it looks. Always run do the Java application for this instance. Okay, that's not big enough. Let me just stretch the size of this out a little bit. The dimensions. I'll say. Um, see if 800 will fit it. Okay, that works. Uh, so right now, what will happen is. You can type in your name, you know, type in another name, and you can hit these buttons. But right now they're not working, so um, this is going to be a two-part tutorial. Or two, uh, so the second part will actually have these functional, but let me show you how to distinguish between which one's being pressed. So right now they're not doing anything. So let's just do a... Uh, um, what's called debugging and you just want to make sure that each of these things are working before you get them to be more specific in what they do so let's say text area dot append and we're going to say um, what was that button called um, print button pushed Or did, I guess it was display button pushed or something. Display button pushed, and here we're going to say text area dot append um, add person button pushed. All right, now let's see if this works. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this and we'll we'll deal with that in the next tutorial. Okay, so what we want to do now is just show that by pressing each button, each button has its own functionality, its own what it does. So let's just say add person. Okay, so add person button press display button. I didn't do the escape. Let me just do that to make it more official. I don't like leaving things undone. So we want to do that escape sequence to a new line. And that way, every time it appends something, it starts the next uh, append, whatever was appended on the following line. So, so now you can see that each button is working correctly. All right, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to read in um, from these text fields and add the person to a uh, to a person class and then display people I'm going to I guess I'm going to add each person object to an array list and when I hit display people maybe I'll have a for each loop and it'll, it'll print out everybody who I've added so that'll be the next tutorial and thank you for watching